Eight tactics car dealers hope that you don't know, and when you do know them, you can kick their butt with them. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy and the author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high-intensity training for car buyers. Well, as you know, the amazing Elizabeth is here, and we're going to discuss eight key tactics that dealers use to control you and how you can easily combat them. As our loyal followers know, the Homework Guide channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. The tactics we're discussing today put you squarely in the driver's seat of your own car deal, right where you belong. Right where you belong. If you're new here, there are tons of videos that you need to see covering car buying strategies from how to reduce unnecessary expenses and fees pushed on you in dealer finance to avoiding fraud at a car dealership. Show your intelligence and subscribe now and hit that notification bell so ding, you don't ding, miss ding. a thing. The Homework Guy is the best car buying advice you can find online. The sales staff at a dealership are under tremendous pressure from their managers and they in turn from the dealer owners to maximize profits on every single vehicle they sell. Many of the car salesmen who will visit here will defend this strategy by saying there's nothing evil about making a profit. Well, they're right. And there's nothing evil about you, the car buyer, defeating them in this game of chess known as car buying. The car salesman represents the dealer who wants to empty your pockets. Well, on the other hand, you have us, the homework guy team, who's here representing you, the car buyer, and we're on your side, and our goal is to help you keep as much of that hard-earned money in your pocket as possible. Okay. It's just two sides playing a game that involves thousands of dollars. And admittedly, they're a little ticked off that we happen <laughs> to have their playbook. So... Let's go out and kick some butt, shall we? All right, let's open that playbook and expose one of the top tactics a car salesman is trained to pull on you from their side of this chess game. Here we go. Tactic number one, the time-wasting strategy. <sighs> Why does a salesman deliberately waste so much time during the sales process, Liz? There is nothing like fatigue and hunger to weaken your resistance. <laughs> Managers are always cautioning their employees, you have to slow things down, take your time. They yell at a salesman who goes too fast. Oh, they yell at them a lot. Well, yeah. Everything takes longer than expected at a car dealership, and it's all by design. You get hungry and tired, as Liz mentioned, and you get impatient. Well, your butt's getting sore in that seat. <laughs> you have to go to the bathroom. You got things to do. The willingness to fight that you had when you first arrived, well, that's fast fading away. You start focusing on the fact that if you don't sign something quick, you're going to be leaving without the reward of a comfy new ride on the way home. And that's precisely the way they want you to think. The time-wasting strategy is easy to defeat, though. First, you need a game plan before you came to the dealership. Don't be focused on trying to knock all of this out in one day the way they want you to. Instead, do it in steps on different days. On your first visit from the very moment you set foot in the dealership, take charge and let the salesman know you're here to test drive some cars. Tell them specifically, if I like what I see, I'll come back tomorrow or the next day to talk numbers. And do not talk numbers on your first visit to the dealership, ever. And you'll always defeat the time-wasting strategy used on clueless car buyers. Round number one goes to the car buyer. Congratulations. Tactic number two, the hot buttons. Mm. You remember all that amphetamine-type hype that you hear from the likes of Andy Elliott. <laughs> oh, yeah, car sales staff receive extensive training on how to use their energy and power of persuasion to break down the needs and vulnerabilities of prospective customers. They assess their customer, then plug them into those scripted role play questions they rehearse all the time, all designed to lead the process. They aren't assessing your vehicle wants, that might surprise you. What they are assessing are your personal weaknesses, those hot buttons, what trips you up, what makes you cave in, what triggers a yes. Well, that's why they ask questions like, how do you plan to pay? And how much are you looking to spend per month? And what's the most important thing to you in your next car? The questions come at you a mile a minute, and all the information they collect can and will be used against you. In a court you. of law. Exactly. No. <laughs> Things like your family needs and safety concerns and good old peace of mind. All of it will be used against you the moment you say something like, I need to think about it. Like the others, defeating the hot buttons tactic isn't difficult. You defeat it by focusing on the advanced game plan that you put together before you came to the dealership. The simpler it is, the better. Like, one, choose the car you want. Two, Make sure it has everything that you need. So be thorough about this. Mm -hmm. And three, negotiate a price. Shut down everything that isn't perfectly on one of those three paths. And before you come to the dealership, have your game plan on a note card. Write it down and don't stray from it. When the barrage of salesman questions come, just politely say, stop one thing at a time. I'm not done deciding what car I want, or I'm still making sure it has what I need, or we're still not at a price I'm willing to pay. 
follow your roadmap to the sale and not theirs. When you stay focused on what you need to do and what's coming next on your game plan, their attempt to exploit you with hot buttons has very little effect on you. When you stay laser focused, round number two goes to the car buyer. Yes. Tactic number three, the looming deadline. This one is hilarious <laughs> and nobody should be fooled by it, but many are. It sounds like this. The sale ends tonight at midnight or rebates are ending tomorrow. It's like the glass slipper and the pumpkin coach. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Disaster is going to happen if you wait till midnight. What's another looming deadline quote, Liz? Oh, that's easy. One of the all-time dealer favorites is, we have several other people looking at this oh, car. Oh, yes. Or even more urgent, I think another salesman took a deposit on this one and the customer is coming back later today. Yikes. Then they tell you if you write up the deal right away, the manager will let you have it. Like there's no honor in the deposit of the other customer. Yeah, that's horrible. That's because it was a BS story. Yeah. The object of applying the looming deadline pressure is to get you to pull the trigger then and there. They don't want you waiting for anything, and they certainly don't want to give you any opportunity to go car shopping somewhere else. The looming deadline is pretty easy to crush. Look your salesman right in the eye and say, so you're telling me there's no point in me coming back tomorrow or the next day like I planned. You won't have a car for me. And then follow that up by saying, no problem. There's several other dealers out there who have the car that I want when I decide to buy. It doesn't matter what deadline they say is looming today at any given dealership. Tell them you don't care. I don't care. The beauty of the internet is that you can find any car at any price at any place you want. When you say, I really don't care, every time they mention a deadline, well, round three goes to the car buyer. Awesome. Tactic number four, the trial close. With this tactic, the salesman is trying to pin you down with a question. It could be something like, if I can get the numbers 110% to your satisfaction, are you ready to take your car home today? That's an Andy Elliott line. Or it could be, if the monthly payments are right where you want, will you take delivery today? Or it could focus on a feature of the vehicle. If I can get those running boards installed that you wanted, are you willing to buy today? Of course, a long time classic. <laughs> could you see yourself driving this home today? This is a search for a commitment, collecting the yeses. The trial close tactic is easy to shoot down. Your answer to questions like this should be one word and you say it immediately. No. Nope. If you don't like using such direct and easy to understand language, you could say, I'll be closer to making a decision after I've shopped with other dealers and found the best overall deal for me. If you shut down the trial close questions, round four goes to the car buyer. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Collecting all these victories. Yep. Tactic number five, the Steve Richards close. This is a classic and it's actually known in the industry as the Ben Franklin close, but we'll call it the Steve Richards close because Steve literally uses it on every close that he does. Here it is. The salesman either folds a piece of paper in half or draws a line down the middle. It's a weak attempt at a pros and cons list. On one side, they list reasons not to buy. Count on these things being things that you could care less about because they don't want to have any convincing reasons why you shouldn't buy a car. On the other hand, they'll list all the benefits, the reason that you ought to buy now. Count on this being an exhaustive list. And you should be exhausted after all that. Right. The entire point of writing all this stuff down is to give you the impression that you're far better off buying now than waiting. You hear them say it, you see them write it down, and you read it all over again, which gives your brain the impression of it being more true, and it's also more convincing. The Steve Richards Ben Franklin tactic is easy to defeat. You just say, I see what you did there, Steve-O, just like the old Ben Franklin clothes. Just call it out for what it is. Yep. Writing all of that stuff down, Steve, doesn't make it more applicable to me. And then you reel them back into reality, letting them know that it's the out-the-door car price that you're concerned about. Not all the little goat trails that they want to explore. Watch the salesman stop writing stuff down. And when that happens, round five goes to the car buyer. Five and oh. Mm -hmm. All right, tactic number six. Another close known as the alternative choice close. This tactic is as old as Steve Richards, and that's Ouch. pretty old. Yeah. It puts options on the table for two purposes. It moves you closer to signing a contract, and it creates the distraction of decisions that are of relatively small consequence and has nothing really to do with your car deal. Right. It will sound something like this. Do you prefer the truck in white or silver? And by the way, they have both of those colors sitting right there. Or something like this. You can take it with the factory floor mats or the heavy duty custom floor mats we have back in accessories. We'll throw those in if you want them. What works for you? If you happen to notice, there's never a yes or no question. Oh no. Asked. 
Never a yes or no question? Well, then there's no yes or no answer. <laughs> All of the questions Kevin mentioned will be focused either on the options they have on the lot or options they can easily throw on the vehicle back in the service department. The object is to get you locked in on something that they have on the lot. Pretty easy to shut this one down. You say, it doesn't matter to me. If they persist, you say again, well, you're way ahead of me. Details like that don't matter at this point. You can also change the subject. Take a pointer from the politician and just don't answer the question at all. <laughs> Shoot yes. something back like you didn't even hear the question. When you kill these questions, round number six goes to the car buyer. Yes, tactic number seven, the payment down payment negotiation. Notice that I didn't call this the price negotiation like you'd like it to be, but that's exactly what it's supposed to be. So after you went home the day you were test driving, you're now back to negotiate the numbers but the salesman puts numbers down that aren't really the numbers that matter. Right. Here's what that sounds like. So here are your monthly payment options. Here's your monthly payment at 48 months with 3,000 cash down. Here is 60 months and 72 months. And here's your payments if you put 5,000 cash down in each of those areas. What payment works best for you? They don't want to talk about the actual price of the car. Everything they propose is going to be some variation of details of the loan, cash down, and monthly payments. The payment down payment negotiation is easy to defeat. So that's the good news. Pick up their paper, fold it in half, and <laughs> just put it in your pocket. And then you say, all I'm interested in is the out the door price of the car. I can calculate my own payments and determine my own cash down. When you've done your homework, you guys, something you should have done after you went home, you know, after those day of test drives, you are prepared to say, so here's my offer. I'm offering X dollars for the vehicle with tax title and license fees applied. This brings the out the door total to X dollars. A lot of people think they should wait and see what the dealer is willing to do. No, no, not at all. You drive the out the door price. You figure it out, you hammer it home, and when you're ahead of the game like this, round seven goes to the car buyer. <laughs> seven and oh. All right, let's see if we can do number eight. Tactic number eight is coming up. This is the back office protect your investment pitch. If you didn't know what the back office is, it's also known as dealer finance. The people they hired to write car loans are the most skilled people in sales at the dealership. So this will definitely be your toughest challenge. Their favorite pitch always ends or starts with to protect your investment mm -hmm. as if you're buying stocks to shore up your retirement account. They also add in the everyone or most of my customers phrases, which sound like this. Most of my customers get the gold package, which includes fabric protection, paint sealer, and rust proofing to protect their investment. Or they say this, here's the extended warranty that everyone loves. You're spending a lot of money on a car, so the you need to protect your investment comment coming from the heavily cologned, well-dressed guy in a business suit seems like reasonable <laughs> advice, but it's not. Not even the tiniest bit. You're also inclined to do what others do, which is why they say this is what our other customers do. Yes, they want you to get their products, but you don't need the extras and equally as important, you don't need all those fees. No way. So here's why that out the door negotiation you had earlier was so important. You pull that piece of paper out and you simply say, this is what I'm paying. I'm passing on everything that you have offered me here today. I don't want any of this stuff. And we've published videos to help you negotiate and finance. The best possible response, if you're not sure, is no. Say it as many times as you need to. No, I'm not interested and have that out the door price handy so he or she can't saddle you with extra fees. When you've done this, you've shut down the finance man and round number eight goes to the car buyer. You have just landed yourself a great car dealer, defeating the car dealer with an eight nothing checkmate. All right. Isn't that awesome? It's great. And all because you stayed in control. You defeated every move they made on the board and you came out the winner. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos. Comment on our videos. Comments really matter because they help boost the search algorithms and help others find the content too. Use hashtag the homework guy in your comment. If you're on other platforms, look for us out there. There's a list of options here on the screen and there are linked in the description box below. And if you're new here, make sure you check out all of our other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people and you might as well benefit from all that great content too. Without a doubt, if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box below. And thanks to everybody who's yes, done that. You, you guys are awesome. But no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is to share this video with family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. Encourage everyone to subscribe. And remember, ring that notification bell so ding, 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 you don't miss the thing. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys 
rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. Sorry, Steve. We, we gotta, gotta go. go. I know Steve misses us. <laughs> <laughs>